Hi, this is Sally Morgan, craniosacral therapist, physical therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And this is Tristan. He's a Corgi. <laughs> and today we are wrapping up our look at the flower essences from Botanical Animal. And we will be finishing our whole series on flower essences Friday and Saturday this week. So today, the botanical animal flower essence we'll be looking at is called In Training. And as the title says, it's for dogs and kitties or horses during training. It's for lack of tolerance, impatience, and defiance. And the bigger description says that in training improves an animal's patience, focus, tolerance, and releases resistance. They become accepting of things they do not understand and tasks that they do not want to do. Establishes a one-on-one -on -one bond with the trainer, which I think is one of the most important things about in training. And one of the most important things about training is to establish that relationship with your animal so that you can explain to them clearly what you'd like them to do. Nearly all the time they are trying to do what we want them to do and we just don't understand what they're telling us. In training says it helps them to work with you and not against you. And you will see many, many, many of the flower essences in, in training are ones that we have looked at in relationship to the other flower essences from Botanical Animal. And the first one we're gonna talk about is borage. Borage has been used for fevers and lung problems. It's from Aleppo, a place we know about sadly from the news and what's been happening in Aleppo and it's uh, native now throughout Europe and the U.S. It has a bright blue star-shaped flower and the center is black. I wish I had some but I don't and they're often grown in a kitchen garden. The leaves taste a bit like cucumber and in the early 1800s they candied the flowers and ate them that way. It has hair on the leaves and several of the flower components of in training do have furry leaves and that correlates to reducing fuzzy thinking so that you can think clearly when you're learning. And in French, um, the name borage comes from bora, which means hairy leaves. And in Celtic, borago is equated with courage. So it's for having courage in the face of what you don't understand. It's been used for comfort of the heart and, and makes you glad. It contains potassium and calcium and salt, which are minerals that are helpful for good heart function. It's been used as a diuretic and it's good for the kidneys. So borage is for those who are having a fear of failure that often take on the role of the parent when they're young and so they become controlling, strong-willed and forceful and angry and tense and inflexible as adults. They have lost the ability to play and have a carefree attitude. So borage will help improve courage to move through obstacles and it's for optimism. It provides clarity and it transforms sorrow and depression into power. And we all know what it's like when you were sitting there in a math class or something that you weren't good at as a child and you just felt that kind of depressed overwhelm. Borage would help you have the courage to say, wait a minute, I could do this last week, I can do it this week, I just have to understand these new concepts. So that's the kind of thing that Borage will help your dog with or your horse when they are undergoing training. The next aspect in, in training is the plumbago and that we all know as the bright pink flower that is a perennial. It's a shrub and it grows native in India. And the root contains many sugars which have antiseptic and antibacterial properties. And it's been used, like so many of these in, in training, for coughs and colds in intestinal worms in particular with the plumbago, as well as skin diseases. And part of the power of clarity is clarity in the skin and clarity in the mind. Plumbago benefits the liver and decreases inflammation in respiratory issues. So clear breathing, clear thinking. And it's for issues of shame, feeling undeserving, lacking of trust in your own judgment, 
and feeling like you're a victim of the will of others. And many of us may have seen trainers that we don't like or wouldn't necessarily subscribe to what they're doing. And they're doing things where the animal is being subjected to that person's will. And that's not what we want with a good training situation. And so the plumbago will help an animal who's been in that situation find a way to cooperate with you and have a happier training experience than what they may have had in the past. The next component of in training is our one of our friends, the yellow monkey flower. And so today we are sitting here in my front garden with the field of wildflowers that were planted here to attract pollinators. And these beautiful yellow daisies have been blooming for, I don't know, a month now. And they are the color of the yellow monkey flower. And the yellow monkey flower, in spite of its yellow color, has cooling properties. And it's for decreasing phobias, depression, and decreasing fears. It decreases vulnerability and decreases oversensitivity. And a few of these aspects of in training have to do with decreasing oversensitivity. And if you think about it, if you're expecting, like if you've had a bad job and now you have a good job, every time the boss comes by to talk to you, you are jumpy thinking, oh my God, what did I do wrong? When in fact the boss may be coming by to say, you're doing a great job today, thanks. So that oversensitivity from your last job <laughs> that you still have in your new job, the monkey flower would counteract that and help you understand that you're doing a good job. It's a mood lifter and it has been used, as we've talked about many times, the monkey flower has been used as um, a remedy for a seasonal affective disorder because it does bring that sunshine to the inside. And as you can see by these flowers around me, even though it's a cloudy day, and yes, once again, raining in New England, <laughs> we have these beautiful yellow flowers that think, make you think of a summer day just looking at them. So that's the aspects of the monkey flower that are in, in training. The next one is the European beech, which is a big tree that has been called the goddess tree. And it has also been associated with strengthening your hair and hair growth. And part of that is associated with courage in um, traditional legends. So that's an important aspect of the European beech. The nuts are high in B6. And in famine, the leaves have been used to eat because they are high in fiber and make you feel full even when you haven't had, you're the woodpecker, even when you haven't had a big meal. The European beech is good for digestion and the boiled leaves have been used to decrease headaches and the bark is loaded with antioxidants. It's really a beneficial tree. And although the seeds are toxic, they have been used to boost kidney function and clear out toxins, especially excess salt and waste and water. So therefore it's been used as a diuretic. It increases your metabolism and it also prevents defects in the neural tube. So that's the central nervous system. And this is the aspect of the European beach that will function in, in training because that clearing out congestion in the central nervous system is what's gonna give you an ability to focus and think and be clear when you're in training or learning. It has antiseptic qualities in its distilled bark and the roots have been known to increase the circulation of air in the soil and it's beneficial for the trees around it. And we all have been in those experiences, maybe at puppy school, where one dog's calm and focus has been able to translate to the two dogs on either side of him and then eventually around the room. So the in training is gonna help your dog be that dog that is focused partially because of the increased circulation and um, the effect on those around him brought to this, rem this uh, flower essence by the European beach. There are a lot of little buggies after my corgi today. In the winter, it retains its leaves, the European beech, and it protects the little trees that are growing under it from the elements. And so that protective quality will be bestowed on an animal using in training in the sense that he will feel safe no matter what is happening during that training process. When he feels like he doesn't understand something, he can refocus and concentrate so that he can learn. Flower remedies from the European beech enhance sympathy and tolerance. And they can signify death or an ending, but they can also 
be useful for transformation through realization and crossing a threshold. So of course, when you're training, there are many aha moments along that way for you and your animal, actually. And those moments are facilitated by the European beach, which brings uh, realization and transformation. And certainly if I had an animal that had been difficult in any number of ways, and I was bringing him to a Tellington Tea Touch course for a period of three or seven days, I would certainly want to have him using um, this particular remedy or uh, flower essence in training during that time so that I can get the most that I can get out of that class for my animal. And part of that is that tolerance and realization that the European beach will bring along. And I have seen so many animals in Tellington training classes where there's just one thing, maybe a wrap, maybe making him feel safe with another neutral dog or a horse that finally has the confidence to walk on a piece of plywood on the ground. And that one moment changes everything so that the animal can learn so much more from the rest of the class. So I would really recommend in training as a flower essence to be used when you do have your animal at some kind of a training course, particularly a tea touch class, because of those many aha moments for you and your animal. And European Beach helps you see the relevance of your experience. It helps you take that one experience like the horse walking on the board in a tea touch class and relate that to the other experiences in your life. So for instance, part of why we have horses walk on plywood in a T-Touch class is to help them feel safe when they're walking into a trailer because it has a similar sound that wood on the floor of the trailer is very similar to the sound of their hooves of the wood on the ground when we have them walk on plywood. So the European Beach is going to help your animal during a training process take that out to the big picture. And several of the flower essences in this particular one in training help an animal take that small experience and make it relevant to the bigger experiences so that they can translate what they learn to their experience in the whole world around them. European Beach has been associated with increasing knowledge through unknown experiences and through revelation. And I always think about um, this pony my sister bought for her kids. It was the first pony. And I went up to the pony farm in North Jersey with her and looked at two or three ponies. And there was one very pretty little bay one. And there was a very sick little white one. And I was a lot thinner then, so I rode these little ponies for her children. And I just, in walk, asked them to do some basic dressage, which some people would say, that pony's never going to need to do that. Why are you asking? But I was asking to see how they learned, to see their tolerance, to see their frustration level, to see if they had any prior training so that they could use what they knew to translate to what I was asking them. So that I was asking them for shoulder in and haunches in and a little bit of um, half pass, like in walk, and turn on the haunches, turn on the forehand. And the little bay pony was very pretty. He was easily frustrated. He was used to being a hunter pony in a frame and never bending or thinking or going out of what he knew. He became easily frustrated. He almost had like a little temper tantrum and he was stomping his feet. The little sick white pony, on the other hand, who we later learned had almost no prior training. We thought he had been a driving pony, but when we drove him, we didn't <laughs> think he had had much experience with that. And he just kept trying and trying. And when I was asking him to turn, he would turn his front legs or his head and getting him to bend through his whole body. He was such a sweet little guy, trying and trying and trying his little heart out. And he was the pony they bought. And he was a blessing because he was able to stand there quietly while Gwen, who was teeny tiny then, sat on the ground and brushed his belly from underneath his four legs. And he never made any attempt to hurt her. But part of what I was assessing that day was his ability to learn his, uh, and his frustration level with new experiences. And these are the kinds of things that the in-training flower essence will help with an animal that you have, like that pony would have benefited from in-training during the time that we were transitioning him from his prior life, whatever that was, to his new life. And he went on to be a great pony hunter type horse. He did some jumpers. He did a lot of driving. He was a really good driving pony, ultimately. And he was a great companion for Gwen in her early riding years. So in training can be super useful when you're working with a new pony for your child or when you have your dog at puppy school. Or even in my case, I usually take adult dogs to different training classes for socializing and just to give them a new experience and to see how they're doing. The next component in, in training is penstamen. 
And again, this is a purple flower and it's often called beard tongue because it looks a little bit like an iris. And this has been associated with introspection and therefore it's been associated with, like the goddess tree, the European beach, with the goddess energy. And part of that goddess energy, especially with the Penn Stamen, is associated with the night and the moon and the stars and it affects introspection so that you can find courage to look inward to find your strength to say well wait a minute what is going on now and how can i use what i know to understand this current experience so that's part of what penn stamen brings to um, in training it allows you to undertake new things in a gentle way and it allows you to take risks of the heart with love and openness so part of that is learning to trust the person you're working with when you're an animal who's in training. And when they're asking you to do something frightening, like walking on a piece of plywood or with some of the dogs I work with, I have them walk on big bubble wrap. And if they're afraid of loud noises and the bubble wrap is cracking under their paws, it gives them an experience that they can, that I can control around them to make sure that they feel safe and they can walk off of it at any moment. And they can also learn that even though those loud sounds are coming from right under their paws, they're still safe, people are still there, they have treats. And so the Penn Stamen helps with that, looking inward to find the courage to do something that seems really scary and be able to complete it. It's for, and, and for trusting the person you're with. You know, if your people are trustworthy and they're having you walk on giant bubble wrap and it's snapping under your feet, then you're more apt to enjoy that experience and to learn from it and translate it to other areas in your life. So the Penn Statement helps you take risks and trust those you're with. It's for inner fortitude despite any kind of outward hardships. So even though the other dogs in the room may be feeling frustrated and barking and whining, the Penn Statement element in this flower essence in training will help your dog say, well, wait a minute, I am not them. I am having a good time here. I really trust my person. These treats are really good, better than the ones I get at home. So maybe now I will find the courage to be different from the others in the room. Penn Stamen is for perseverance and enduring through adversity. And even if you're feeling sorry for yourself or persecuted or unable to bear life's challenges, the Penn Stamen will help you work through that. It clears out all of the chakras, so we're going to be talking about the chakras next week, but from the top to the bottom of your body, all of your chakras are clear and open so that you can be available to learn. And the chakras are associated th with things like groundedness, l love, balance, clear thinking, clear thoughts, clear speaking. And so when that's all in balance, you're in a perfect position to be able to take in new knowledge with no blocks. You're feeling safe and secure in your circumstance. You are thinking clearly, you're seeing clearly, all of your senses are working well. And the Penn Stamen helps that happen so that you are able to learn optimally. It helps you be present in the moment and relate to others. So it's been especially associated with the heart chakra, which is about love and connection with others. So Penn Stamen is clearly an important part of in training flower essence. And another flower that I love that's in, in training is the cosmos. And I actually have a few little white ones growing in the backyard, but these yellow flowers were so beautiful today. So we're here. And cosmos, as we know, are in the daisy flower um, and sunflower family, like asters and like these guys behind me. And cosmos, as we know, are often pink and white and magenta and they have fine thin hairs on the leaves and as i said many of these flower essences that are in in training have furry little leaves and part of that is to clear furry thinking into clear thinking so that you don't have a fuzzy consciousness so the cosmos is no different it has a little furriness on it and it's a plant associated with light and air like the sunflower because the sunflower, as we know, grows from the ground very, very tall, and it does have an aspect of incorporating grounding with higher consciousness. So the cosmos is like that. It's about integrating that higher consciousness, and so many parts can speak as one whole, and many of the flower essences in, in training have that idea of not just seeing the trees in the forest, but the whole forest, and still being able to focus on one tree. So that's an important part of learning, having that ability to see the big picture, but also focus on the little picture. And part of that, 
Um, I always think of Sally Swift when I think about this because she talked about having soft eyes when you ride a horse. And even when you're going over a jump, you need to focus on the jump that's ahead of you, but you need to see everything that's around you. You need maximum perif peripheral vision, which is part of what um, soft eyes gives you. And that way you can plan your approach to the jump and your landing after the jump with the big picture in mind so that you can take the best turn to cut a few seconds off in that jumper jump off. Or if you're going cross country, you can see things around you that your horse might be frightened of when you're jumping from the forest out into the fields. And so that idea of soft eyes is echoed in the cosmos because it allows the many parts to speak as one whole. So it's that same idea of focus, but seeing the big picture. Cosmos is also associated with the sign of Gemini, which is quick and adaptable and sensitive to light and air. And bright colors especially are associated with the vibrant life force that the cosmos bring. So that idea of vitality and energy, it, you know, all of us have been, you know, sitting in a meeting or someplace when we've been really tired and we just can't focus and we can't learn. So part of what cosmos brings is a vibrant life force. So you have the energy to learn because when you're really tired, you're not in an optimum learning situation. The cosmos also helps you engage your thinking and helps you to see clearly with an awake mind, with an agile, quick, and bright wit and mind. It allows your thoughts to flow freely and intelligently, especially with the spoken word. And in fact, Geminis are very attracted to written and spoken word. And so that aspect of the cosmos, of being able to understand, so that when your person says to you, um, like, oh, I was teaching my dogs to turn in a circle. And I was saying the word circle, which I hardly ever say to them. And they were able to quickly learn that meant to go in a circle. And I usually um, was teaching them to circle where they were. And then for dog dancing, I certainly need Tristan to be able to circle around me. So I have had to teach him these longer new words that you don't use every day around me and circle. And so the aspect of cosmos in, in training would help him understand these new words because of its um, connection with that verbal and uh, language components. Um, cosmos will help decrease barking um, and it relates to the soap berry and the chakras as well. So it's a good one for um, that in learning as well so that if your dog is distracted and barking at other dogs it will help him focus and concentrate on what he's doing and concentrate on you. Cosmos is great for those who are disorganized especially in communication and are unfocused, overexcited, overwhelmed by too many ideas. It will help them integrate ideas and find coherent thinking. And again, that relates to Tellington T-Touch work with focus and clarity, because that's what a lot of um, the T-Touch work brings to your animal, you know, especially with our confidence course, also called the Playground for Higher Learning. The animals really are able to think clearly out there and really think, and we see them really learning and thinking in a way that you never see in most other kinds of training for animals. I mean, this really is what we call a playground when we are working with our animals. And so many of us think of going out to work the horse as a bit of a job, a pleasant job, but it's still a job. And it is far better to think of your animal and your time with your animal as playing because our minds already are focused on the idea of having a good time. Whereas work makes you feel like you're doing something you have to do and you don't wanna do it. And that's not what our time with our animals is like. We want to be with our animals. We want to play with them. And most of the reason we have them is for that experience of unity and clarity we have when we are playing with them. And so the cosmos will help us find that idea and focus and clarity and um, ability to integrate the big picture with the little picture so that we are having a good time when we are working with our animals in training. In training has many flower essences in it. So the next one is also familiar to us, the horse chestnut. And again, this one has, this is the white horse chestnut. It has tiny white flowers. It's a native in the Balkans. And it was used for centuries for vascular disease. And you know, that idea of increasing blood flow helps increase learning and helps increase the flow of ideas through your mind and through your body. Um, horse chestnut has been used for kidney stones, hemorrhoids, venous insufficiency, and it has strong antioxidant properties. And that's important.
because many of these flower essences have antioxidant properties in the actual trees and flowers that they come from. And that is very important for combating free radicals in the body. And they have been associated with many diseases. So these plants have many, many healing properties. And all of that, those healing properties are captured in the flower essence because that is the full expression of the plant in its little flowers. And horse chestnut has been known to strengthen the capillaries. And it's for those who can prevent thoughts and ideas they do not desire from entering their minds. So if you are absolutely terrified of something that you're experiencing in a training class, maybe just being around other dogs or a horse being asked to walk through water, if you are so terrified that all you can think about is how bad it has been every time you've walked in water, you're unable to think clearly and follow directions from the person you trust so that you can learn a new way of negotiating this scary situation. And the horse chestnut will help with that. It will help stop those, those ideas that you do not desire, like your fears from the past, from entering your mind. Horse chestnut helps you connect to the present moment and it helps break up that idea of circular thoughts of, of fear where you're on that hamster wheel in your head saying, I can't do this, I don't know how to do this. Like that little bay pony I was working with, he was so afraid that he would be in trouble for um, trying some of the things I was asking him to do that he was unable to try to do them. Whereas the little white pony who had very little experience with people, he was able to try everything because I had a relationship with him in minutes after sitting on him and I, even on the ground actually I was asking him to do the same things and he just was like well okay I'll try it but that poor bay pony he had a lot more to overcome to be able to learn and he would have really done well with the in training and so the horse tr chestnut would have stopped him from being so worried about what I was asking him to do that he would have been able to think and relate to me and just try what I was doing because he had no reason to be afraid of me so the horse chestnut connects you to that current moment and it helps drive out worry and bring thoughts of peace um, and it helps for those who have um, thoughts that interfere with your ability to do work or find pleasure from those circular bad thoughts, the horse chestnut will help you find calm and peace and um, make clarity less obstructed so that you can see. It clears out feelings of guilt and depression and confusion. It's been used for insomnia and also for those with a headache. So it's good for mental congestion. And when you think about that, sometimes if you are you know, overwhelmed with other thoughts or you're so worried about one thing and here you are at the training class and you're trying to focus, sometimes it can be like that dog who's worried about all the other dogs in a class. Maybe he's had trouble with another dog in his life and now he's really nervous and that's all he can think about and he can't focus on you and can't learn. The horse chestnut would really help him because it would get that congestion out of his head of all these thoughts of worry about other dogs so that he's able to focus on you and learn thanks to the flower essence in training. And the next aspect of in training is the fairy lantern, one of my favorite flowers because corgis have long been associated with fairies and the fairy lanterns do look like tiny little lanterns that fairies would carry. Here's the woodpecker again. The fairy lantern has been called the white globe lily and it's a native wildflower in California up to 5,000 feet of elevation. It prefers rocky slopes and hillsides and it blooms early to late spring. And it has little hanging flowers, little globes hanging off of the main plant. And it's related also to the mariposa lily and in particular the star tulip. And it has hairy petals, so it has also been associated with sensitivity and receptivity. And it remains in its bud form and the petals never fully open. So because of that, it has a property of healing that has been associated with fragile beauty. Um, but it is also a very robust and strong plant. And um, if it's disrupted in any way, it recovers easily and quickly and is able to flourish. So it's really strong in that way. It, um, 
helps you protect your inner self from the outer world because of the way that little lantern is around the inner parts of the flower it's been associated with that idea of protecting your inner self from the outer world and so that way when you're in that training class and all the other dogs are barking and getting very escalated and you want to remain calm you're able to like take a deep breath and trust your person and focus inward and protect yourself from the chaos going on around you same thing with your horse. I mean, I used to ride dressage horses, Morgans, and I, they were at a big Morgan farm. And of course, they're going for a whole different kind of training than I was. And so they'd be in the ring trying to get the horses to pick their legs up and get them excited and snorting. And I'm trying to keep my horse calm and focused. And so the fairy lantern um, would have been really helpful for my horses at that time to help them find that inner focus even though um, and bring them some protection from what's going on around them so that they wouldn't be too distracted. So that's part of what the fairy lantern does in, in training. Um, it keeps the flowers safe from the outside world and it never fully opens to the sun. And we have seen this quality in its ability to give you self-confidence and inner strength while honoring your own inner beauty and innocence and your inner strength and your acceptance of adult responsibilities. And we looked at the fairy lantern previously in obsess or uh, yeah, in independence. So independence is partially what you need when you're um, learning and, and in training. So that idea of you know holding on to responsibility but retaining that playful childlike quality is exactly what you want for in training. And this is what a lot of our T-Touch classes really teach dogs and people and horses and cats and bunnies is how to learn in a fun way that makes you want to learn and have fun with your person as opposed to it being like work. And the fairy lantern really captures that idea. You honor your inner beauty and innocence and your childlike qualities that are beneficial while also taking on responsibility and maturing and it helps those who lack inner strength to face the world and it's also good to enhance emotional development and create a healthy relationship with your inner child so to have optimal learning we need to accept responsibility and be mature but at the same time you want to keep those childlike qualities of wonder and spontaneity and you know joy and play so that you can learn better you learn best when you are calm and focused at the same time and so in training will help that um, be possible for your dog or for your horse or your bunny or your kitty it helps you be independent and skillful and knowledgeable and it also has the aspect of enhancing your appreciation of nature and that's important when you're learning especially if you're outside and learning because you can find that connection to the greater world around you the oneness that is all things and that will give you inner strength and courage when you're feeling confused and overwhelmed so the fairy lantern is a really important part of the in training flower essence from botanical animal and the last component of in training is one that I find fascinating and it's the only time this flower essence is used in any of the in training I mean any of the botanical animals and that is the rubber rabbit brush and it's also been called the gray rabbit brush and camisa and it's a low shrub so I have a shrub similar but I don't have the same one because um, they are not native in the Northeast but it's kind of a low little round shrub and it's also hairy and it's in the sunflower family again that connection of grounded with higher consciousness from the sunflower it's found in western canada and the u.s and it blooms in the fall which is a time we traditionally associate with going back to school and therefore with learning and the rabbit brush is interestingly not eaten by rabbits but again the plant has small little gray hairs on it and those little gray hairs are associated with the feeling of the softness of a rabbit and that's how it gets its name and the rubber part we'll talk about in a minute the plant used to be used to um, make a slow burning fire to smoke hides and they also made yellow dye from the bright yellow flowers and used that to dye baskets and again the flowers are very thin and long and flat but they are the color of the flowers behind me here 
And like so many of these, it's been used for colds and fevers and coughs. And the leaf has been used to relieve constipation and digestive issues as well as for colds. So anything that's been used to clear up phlegm or to increase circulation in the body is going to increase circulation to the mind and therefore bring about the possibility of greater learning and greater mental function. And the sap has a rubbery quality. Um, which has been used as chewing gum, interestingly. So that's how it has the name, a rubber rabbit brush. And mashed up leaves have been used to pack around an aching tooth um, to help that as well. So you can see the rabbit brush is a really interesting plant with a lot of uses. As a flower essence, it's been in particularly used for inspiration and for the right brain. And the right brain is that part of your brain that's associated with insight and aha moments and creativity and all of those um, qualities of an active and lively consciousness for a flexible state of mind. And so that's going to be an important thing when you're learning to be flexible and to include both sides of your brain. You need both sides of the brain engaged for optimal learning, which is an aspect of all of the Tellington T-Touch work that we do when we're training an animal. We are using both sides of their brain and our brain, which is why, as in Feldenkrais work and with some craniosacral therapy techniques, you were able to learn from one experience and translate that to the rest of your life. So you only need to do proper trailer loading just once for the horse to be good at trailering for the rest of his life. And that's interesting because when I did a radio interview with my sister, which you can find online, I don't know the exact link, but it's on my website, which is www.sallymorganpt.com. One of the things my sister said was, I still remember we had this horse that we couldn't load. We had tried everything and you happened to be visiting. And in about 10 minutes, you got him to load and we never had a problem again. So that's an important aspect of what the rubber, rubber rabbit brush will impart because you need that right brain engaged for permanent learning to take place. And Tellington T-Touch, as I said before, is a great technique to use for training while you're using the in-training flower essence. And the rubber rabbit brush, as I said, is for a flexible state of mind. It's for those who are easily overwhelmed by the details and are unable to cope with demanding situations or simultaneous events. So this aspect is going to be really useful when you're training a service or a therapy dog because that dog has to be able to focus on the directions you're giving him but also interact with the, the whole universe around him in a nursing home or in a busy town or in a congested street. And so in training I think even if the dog is calm and learning nicely or horse because there are service horses now, I think in training is a really good flower essence to use for them because it will help them be able to focus on you and then look at the big picture of the job they have to do in the environment around them. And that is not easy for anyone to do, animals or people. But the in training flower essence will be very helpful. So it's the, for those who are overwhelmed by details and can't process events simultaneously. So it stimulates the ability um, and vitalizes the awareness of the faculties of the soul. And that's important because you need all of your um, mental capacities and your physical capacities engage when you're in training. And that comes back to that idea of trusting your higher power, your higher wisdom, your higher self, your soul self. So one of the interesting things about rabbit brush with that connection to the right brain is that it gives you the ability to combine two polar opposites and understand them and give you that focus on detail, especially while getting the wider perspective. So again, we get back to that horse trying to walk over a piece of plywood on the ground. He will now know when he hears the sound of his hoof in a trailer, in a different barn, anywhere you may bring him. Certainly for my mother's horses, that means bringing the minis up the steps into the house where their hooves make yet a different sound than they made on the driveway or in the yard. And they are able to generalize that experience of walking on a piece of cardboard or plywood on the ground to all these experiences where their hooves make a different sound when they're walking. I know that they're safe and comfortable to do that. So that's the idea of taking that one thing, that one little tree in the forest and then seeing the big picture. And the rabbit brush helps with that. And that's really one of its most important things is bringing that attention to detail and including that wide perspective of the big picture. 
um, and having an awareness of how these parts are all interrelated and organized. And that is, again, an important part when you're learning, is looking at all the little pieces and then putting them together. For Tristan, who does some agility work, um, and I wish I could bring him to a real agility competition, but I'm not that skilled. <laughs> I don't know how to train him for some of the things. But we have worked over just the jump and just the weave poles and just the teeter-totter and just some other kinds of jumps and um, things on the ground. And so he has, and the tunnel. And so part of what the rabbit brush will bring is if you're working with a dog that has learned all of these separate elements, as Tristan has, it will help him integrate that into the big picture of being able to do the whole course, of being able to take all those little pieces and then make them part of the big picture. So rabbit brush is really important for in training when you're working with an animal that's going to be doing some complex tasks. And for yourself, it helps souls take a greater interest in the world around them and learn from physical existence. So you learn from everyone around you, and certainly I've seen this in many T-Touch classes that I've participated in and taught, where we'll be working with one horse and another horse is standing with his head out the stall the whole morning, learning and learning and learning, just like the other horse that we're working with. And when we bring that second horse out, maybe in the afternoon, we find out he's learning things so quickly because he's been watching. So that ability to be able to take in information from the world around you is important for in training and that's part of what the rubber rabbit brush gives in training that ability to look at the big picture and then bring it down to your own world instead of having a fuzzy consciousness with that furry little plants that the rabbit brushes are it helps you have an alert mind with acute sensory perception and a flexibility in your mind and so you can see that through these flower essences that make up in training, you have everything you need to give you and your pet, your horse, your dog, your bunny, your kitty. And I say bunnies because I have taught bunnies to do bunny agility and bunny jumps um, and other tricks. My rabbits do everything a, a dog would ever do. Sit, come, down, stay. Anyway, when you're working with an animal in training, in training flower essence can be really beneficial because as you can see, it opens up their perspective to the outer world. It helps them look at how one small thing goes into the big picture. It helps them be calm and find their courage from in their heart when they're in a situation that might be frightening and difficult. And so it's really a very, very helpful flower essence and not one that people think about a lot. Some of my trainer friends keep it on hand because they like to have dogs using it when they're taking their classes, and I'm sure that helps with their success. But it is not one that you immediately think of. And you know, most of us, our dogs are not the really naughty ones in classes. Most of our dogs are pretty well behaved and they try pretty hard. But it would be really great to include flower essences such as in training in your work with your animal when you are, in fact, training them to do something new. Right, Tristan? He likes to learn his dog dancing because he gets really special treats then. And he would benefit some, from some in-training to help him learn some more difficult things. For some reason, learning to walk backwards is a little bit tricky for uh, him in particular. And so maybe the in-training will help him with that. So today we have been talking about the botanical animal flower essence in-training. And it's useful for lack of tolerance, impatience, and defiance. And I have to say, that idea of defiance when your horse just won't go forward, so many quarter horses do this, it's when they're overwhelmed and they, they don't understand what you're asking them. And so I wouldn't really call it defiant. It's just when they don't know what else to do and we perceive it as defiant. And the same with your dog. I've seen so many people's dogs just sit down on a leash and refuse to move and they think they're being defiant. But the dog is trying to tell them something. Maybe they're hot, maybe the pavement's burning their feet, maybe they've walked too far, maybe they need a drink. There are so many things that your dog could be communicating to you in that moment and you think he's being resistant when in fact he's just saying, wait a minute, I have a problem here, you need to help me. So again, the bigger picture for in training, Tristan, do you need to know about in training, honey? It improves your animal's patience, focus, tolerance, and it releases resistances. So this might be one you wanna use with your animal when you're going through a training program. The animals become more accepting of things they do not understand and tasks they don't want to do. It establishes a one-on-one -on -one bond with the trainer, which I would really encourage for you to give this to your horse or your dog, especially when you are um, working through some training issues. It could just be the thing that you need to help you. 
It helps your animal work with you and not against you. And so it's gonna enhance your relationship with your animal and every kind of training experience. And again, the word training to me is almost like the word work, it sounds bad. And every experience you have with your pet or your horse is training. And every experience is an opportunity to learn. So when you are with your animal and you are, you know, like Tristan's taking a walk and something is frightening to him, that's an opportunity for me to get him to trust me and for me to work with him and trust him and his instincts so that we can have a more pleasurable experience together. So in training can be super helpful for many kinds of situations with dogs and cats and horses and bunnies, some of which I've talked to you about today. And so again, it's in training from Botanical Animal. You can get it on my website or my sister's website. And by the way, uh, if you're buying something from my website, you might get something that comes up that says, um, this is not a protected website, your email could be compromised, blah, blah, blah. Just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing wrong with my website. You are not going to have your email compromised, so don't worry about that. And my computer guy is going to look into that when he's here later this week. So um, this is Sally Morgan, craniosacral therapist, physical therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner with animals and people. And this is Tristan, who's a corgi. And today we've been talking about the botanical animal flower essence in training. And tomorrow we are going to continue our talk about flower essences. We're going to talk about rescue remedy. And then on Saturday we will wrap up uh, uh, the big picture of flower essences and when and why and how we use them in a general way. And then we'll be moving on through the eight chakras that pets have and talking about them over the next couple of weeks. Um, oh boy, we're being surrounded by little bees now because these are plants to attract pollinators. So we are here in my garden with these beautiful yellow daisies and it is about to rain any second. So thanks for joining us today. Have a great day and do look on my website and check out all the flower essences that are available from Botanical Animal. They have many uses and many great properties that can really enhance your relationship with your pet. And after all, isn't that what we all want and why we have pets is to have a great relationship with them and have the best relationship possible in the kindest, most respectful way that we have to develop a relationship between us and our animals. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.